When Jesus reached the country of Gerasenes on the other side of the lake, two demoniacs came towards him out of the tombs, creatures so fierce that no one could pass that way. They stood there shouting, What do you want with us, Son of God? Have you come here to torture us before the time? Now some distance away there was a large herd of pigs feeding, and the devils pleaded with Jesus, If you cast us out, send us into the herds of pigs. And he said to them, Go then. And they came out and made for the pigs, and at that the whole herd charged down the cliff into the lake and perished in the water. The swine herds ran off and made for the town, where they told the whole story, including that, including what had happened to the demoniacs. At this, the whole town set out to meet Jesus, and as soon as they saw him, they implored him to leave the neighborhood. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's gospel passage speaks about Jesus healing the the demoniacs. In the same passage in Luke, it speaks about only one person. Here it speaks about two. I remember once blessing a, a car that a daughter had, had bought for her mother as a gift. Mother is elderly, and the daughter and the mother came to to have the car blessed. And even as I was blessing the car, I saw that the mother was not very pleased. She, did, she didn't look very happy. You know, for generally, a, a daughter buys you a car. I, I think you should be very happy about it. But she didn't seem to be very uh, very pleased. So at the end of the blessing, I, I said, you know, congratulations, you've got a new car, and you must be happy. And then she started ranting, and she said, I don't like it. I like my old car. You know, I knew exactly what to do. This car is, is just too modern. I don't understand what to do, and I'm not happy at all. And I could see the, the embarrassed daughter at the side. But, you know, that's, that's how it is. Sometimes you just use something so long. You, you don't want to let go of it because you know how to do things with it. It's pretty much like how we have a couch in the house and we have our favorite place on that couch. You know, you, you sit over there, you sit over there, you sit over there, and then the couch adjusts, adjusts itself to you. So then you fit nicely into it. If anybody else takes that space, you don't like it because, you know, that space of your couch actually is adjusted to your body. Here in the house over here, when I came, I found it very amusing because one side of the couch uh, is where Father Michael Shadbolt used to sit. And, and, you know, you can see it's all worn out that portion of it, and he is, because he sat there, he sat there, and I sit on the other side. So whoever the next priest is, now has only the center portion, because the two of us will have worn out the two sides of it. But that's how it is, you, you, you do something for a long time, and then you just feel very comfortable with it. And then we don't like that change to come in. In today's gospel passage, we read, at the end of the passage, that after Jesus has, has rid these men of the demons, they go into the swine, and the swine goes off and gets drowned in the lake. And the word tells us, the people from the whole town came to meet Jesus, and then they, and when they saw him, they begged him to leave the neighborhood. You, you wouldn't expect that. You would, you know, there are two, two people who are suffering for so long and they've just been healed. You'd expect a party in the neighborhood. You know, everyone comes back, their family comes back and they're rejoicing. But that's not what happens. They look at Jesus and they say, leave. Why? Because till that time, their swine and these 
two men possessed by the demons actually coexisted very comfortably. You know, the two men with the demons, they were not in the village. They were asked to leave the village in the in Gospel of Luke. If it's the one man, he was tied up and chained in the tombs. So um, the word tells us very clearly they stay in the they stay in the tombs that's amongst the dead is where these men are living. They are not in the city, they are not amongst the people, they are not amongst the villagers. They are they are there somewhere near the tombs in a place outside the city, outside the village. But the swine that belongs to these villagers are amongst these demons. And there's a perfect relationship with the swine and the people possessed with the demons. The swine belongs to the villagers. The demons are outside the village. The villagers have no problem that their swine mingle with the people who are possessed. And there's a nice cohibition of the, the swine with the people who are possessed by the demons. And the villagers have no problem when that status quo is maintained. Everything's fine now. We have kind of adjusted with this life that these two men will always be there. Our swine will be there along with them. And everything's fine for us. Now Jesus walks into this very comfortable comfortable adjustment they have, they, they have been having of the swine moving around with these two men who are possessed. Jesus has moved into this very comfortable situation for them and disturbed the status quo. When Jesus walked in there and disturbed the status quo, these people found that they have lost something that was profitable for them. A working environment that was very good and comfortable for them has now been disturbed. And that didn't sit right with them. So what's their solution? The one who came and disturbed it, you go out. You who came and disturbed this very comfortable arrangement we've had, you stay out. They are not looking at the fact that, that Jesus has come in and this these two men have been have been released from their burden that they that this man has come this this great prophet has come come let us let us let us invite him into our village and, and see what changes he can make no he is disturbed our comfortable arrangement the arrangement of our possession that is mingling with a sinful situation and we are very comfortable with it now, this is very much us. This is very much who we are. Our possessions, be it spiritual, be it material, be it relationship-wise, our possession, what we have, which is in a comfortable agreement with certain sinful situations, if Jesus comes in, he's going to disturb it. So let the Lord stay out of it. I'll give you an example. I go to work, and when I go to work, I have my own family, I've got a wonderful family. I go to work, but at my workplace, I've got this person who seems to understand me very, very well. A person of the opposite sex listens to me a lot because my wife never listens to me anyway. Wives don't know how to listen. And so she doesn't listen to me, but this woman listens to me, She's kind, she laughs at my joke, my wife doesn't get my jokes at all. This is, this is a wonderful person. And, and this arrangement that I have, I have a family, but I have this nice arrangement of this little relationship that is my little possession, that is in a sinful environment, and it's adjusted very well over there, it's nice and comfortable, I don't want this, this disturbed. And if the Lord comes into this, it's going to get disturbed. And so Jesus, stay out of that relationship. While I'll still go to pray, I'll still go to church, I'll still sit in my own village and be okay, but my possession will have its little arrangement with sin. 
And we can have this, this kind of a same attitude with everything that we have. I can have unforgiveness in my heart. And I can think to myself, I'm, you know, that, that area of unforgiveness, I don't, I don't like Nelson a lot. I, I have a problem with Nelson. And this possession of mine, of my relationship with Nelson, which is strained, I, I can let that be strained. I can justify my action. It's adjusted. I've adjusted with the concept that I don't like this man. I've adjusted and agreed in my mind that, that, you know, what I've done is right. This is okay. I just don't talk to him anymore. I don't need to meet him anymore. I've nicely adjusted myself with that arrangement. Now, when the Lord comes into this relationship, he's going to shake it up. What you do is wrong. Your relation, your, your attitude of unforgiveness is wrong. I don't like Jesus to shake this arrangement up. So Jesus, you stay out. You stay out of this. In everything else, I don't mind. I can come and celebrate a mass. That's fine. I can be okay celebrating the mass. I can be dishonest in a particular situation. I can be dishonest in my workplace. You know, dishonesty can can vary on different levels as well. You can either be stealing millions from your bank. Uh, there's a person who who stacks money inside uh, uh, inside the a- ATMs, right, Lloyd? Yeah, he stacks money. He literally holds the millions and pushes it all in. Now he can be, if he wants, he can be stealing the millions from there instead of instead of pushing it into the into the ATMs. He can be pushing it into his house ATM somewhere there, and that can be one kind of stealing. Or you can be just taking the office stationery that's there in the office. You know that pen that should not bother the company at all. That little pencil that you take home, it accidentally fell into your your. Uh, you know, your bag and, and you know, that extra battery that was there just sitting around, just fell into the bag, you know, some way or the other. It could be the millions there or it could be the pencil here. But it's a, it's a very comfortable arrangement. It's a very comfortable arrangement. There's, there's nothing wrong in that. If Jesus enters in, he's going to make it a bit uncomfortable. I'm going to lose my swine, inverted commas. I'm going to lose what I've been comfortable with. And so Jesus, you stay out of this. We can so easily be the people in the villages who think to themselves, who think to ourselves, let Jesus stay out of this comfortable situation that I've I've nicely snuggled myself in and I feel life is going on okay. Jesus comes in to change and convert When Jesus came into that village, he came in to change and convert. If we don't permit Jesus to come into our life and change things around, then we are on the wrong path. We are on the wrong relationship. I need to permit the Lord to change my thinking. I need to permit the Lord to change my ways. I need to change, permit the Lord to challenge my relationships. I need him to do that. I need him to come into my village. Even if I lose the swine, even if I lose my possessions, even if I lose what I'm comfortable doing, but I need to permit Jesus to come in. Let's pray and ask the Lord for this grace, even as we 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 thank the Lord for the different possessions we have in life, spiritual, emotional, relationships, our jobs, our vocations, all these blessings that we have. We thank Jesus for them. But if we've got comfortable in a situation where we've placed all these with with situations that are maybe sinful or situations that might not be approved by God, let us permit Jesus to enter into these so that he can correct us, tell us where we are wrong and bring about a conversion and a change within our heart. Let's close our eyes for a moment. Lord, you walked into the lives of those villagers. What they lost was a number of swine. What they were going to get was the salvation of their souls. This will be our challenge as well. 
are we ready to lose the swine of this world? The little comforts that give us a little pleasure and joy. Fleeting moments of joy and happiness as Romans 12, 9 says. Lord Jesus, when you knock in at the door of our heart, you are offering us salvation. Give us the grace never to choose the swine over salvation. Let us never choose what has made us comfortable and we have adjusted ourselves to it. Let us not choose that over you. Let us never choose sin over holiness. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.